Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what's playing out in Florida with the state's education commissioner, Manny Diaz Jr. and Leon County Superintendent, Rocky Hanna. It's an important issue as it could impact freedom of speech and serve as a warning to other public educators. Of course, Rocky Hanna isn't the only one in the crosshairs of the powers that be. We recently heard Disney battled Governor Ron DeSantis in court over his don't say gay law and many disagree with and even fight against his abortion and transgender care policies. As for Rocky Hanna, if dismissed from his post, it could be a chilling reminder to educators throughout Florida. While he and Governor DeSantis may have starkly different political views, educators should still be able to feel free to express them without worry of recrimination. Rocky Hanna recently received a letter from the Florida's Education Commissioner, Manny Diaz Jr. And it accused Hanna of violating of several statutes, not following directives and allowing his personal political views to serve as his school leadership. The infractions of Hanna are summed up as such. He publicly opposed the Don't Say Gay law and defied the governor's order that barred the mandate of students wearing masks during the COVID pandemic. Additionally, he criticized a DeSantis-backed bill that would pay for students to attend private schools. Furthermore, he allowed parents to excuse their children to attend a protest held against DeSantis' education policies. Despite Hannah's overwhelming victory of 60% of the vote in the 2020 elections, and the fact that he does not need a teaching license to hold office, this investigation still looms large and could have a profound impact on the future of public education in the state. However, at least one high-profile leader within Governor DeSantis' ranks may have an agenda, as a leader of local chapter of Moms for Liberty was the person to file the single complaint against Rocky Hanna. Hanna believes this is a matter of free speech, as evidenced in a statement he made. It's a sad day for democracy in Florida, and the First Amendment right to freedom of speech when a state agency with unlimited power and resources can target a local elected official in such a biased fashion. Hannah has two options at this point. He can either go to a hearing before an administrative judge, attempt to settle the issue, or surrender his teaching license. He hasn't announced what his next step will be, but it seems clear he is torn between wanting to fight what could become a detrimental decision for the future of education in Florida and the potential for it to have a lifelong impact on his career. For educators, this situation should be a warning about allowing personal opinions to override the political talking points of those in power. Changing the course of education should involve intensive collaboration between a variety of entities, including educators. The importance of experienced educators in leading the way cannot be understated. Now more than ever, teachers must be able to freely express their opinion without fear of recrimination or loss of their licenses. As the story develops, let's hope that justice is served and the rights of educators are not further jeopardized by any future decisions or rhetoric. 